Welcome, fellow truth seekers, to our cosmic corner of the internet. Today, we are honored to bring you a profound and transformative experience with the renowned Andromedan contactee, Alex Collier. But before diving into cosmic wisdom, we kindly ask you to lend your support. Please take a moment to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell icon for notifications. Doing so, you help us amplify Alex Collier's knowledge and reach a wider audience. Together, let's ignite the awakening of consciousness around the world. Sit back, relax, and listen to the entire webinar, number 30. In it, Alex Collier covers the current state of the world and galaxy, the Schumann resonance, solar system anomalies, and much more. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and good evening, everybody, wherever you are on this beautiful globe. Um, we have a lovely spring webinar for you today uh, with a very highly polished Alex Collier. Alex, good afternoon. Good morning. How are you? Hey, JP. How are you? So, James, always nice to see you. So, are we on? Is that it? Am I on? Yep, you're on. That's it. Uh, oh, okay. So, do you want do you want to give a um, uh, before before we start? Do you want to give a, a kind of um, a little trailer uh, synopsis so that um, I can easily cut that out and put it in the sort of trailer? Please. Um, okay, um, we're going to talk about current events. What? We're going to talk about current events. We're going to talk about uh, the Schumann residence. We're going to talk about some anomalies and things in our solar system. And um, we will uh, finish up with um, uh, some, some questions and answers, of course, which I enjoy. Um, and over the next couple of webinars, we're going to be talking about uh, things that are in our solar system that are not natural. And, and there's a purpose for this, and we will get to that over the next three webinars. Um, you're going to be amazed. Uh, I'm still amazed. And, and what I'm most amazed about is how neither NASA or the European Space Union will ever, ever talk about this stuff. Maybe the Chinese will, um, but they're just getting started um, with this. And, and I don't know if the Russians even care one way or the other. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is our 30th webinar. And uh, I, I myself am nothing short of amazed <laughs> that there's been 30 webinars. Um, and I just want to say to all of you, um, thank you. Thank you for the continued support. Thank you for this live, and, and thank you for watching the the reruns. Um, I'm, I'm 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 very happy and and proud that you find some value in in all of these things. And it's it's. It's helped me personally to grow and to really think about, you know, where my place is in the world and, and how I view the world. And um, I've constantly had to reshift and change my perspectives. And I, I just want to say too that there are no words to express my gratitude to Alphaseus and Morinay. There just isn't. I mean, none of this would have been. And there are, I'm, I'm just so honored. I'm just so honored. And in the last few weeks, I've had some of you um, send me packages and emails and and the such, and, and I want you to know that um, as I'm back on the mend here uh, in the next week or so, um, I will be getting back to you directly um, uh, through email and or a phone call, okay? Uh, there's been a lot going on on my end, and um, it's, uh, it's been a challenge. 
And, you know, it's, it's interesting when, when I think about the 30 webinars and I think about how long that I've actually been talking about these things. It's going on 25 years now. Uh, you know, there are times it's gone by in a flash and there's other times it's, it's felt like three lifetimes. And I was um, listening to something regarding the reptilian races. And, you know, back in 91, 92, 93, when I first started talking about this, uh, about the reptilians, ladies and gentlemen, you can't even know the shit I caught, the flack. I mean, you know, there was so much debris <laughs> everywhere. Um, and once I said it and it came out and it was on a on an old VHS, uh, you know, I, I lost a lot of friends, uh, relationships ended, just a lot of things. And you know, I and and now it's almost common knowledge the things that I and, and others back in the early nineties were talking about. It's almost common knowledge now, and and um, it's it's amazing to have seen how far it's all come. And what I share with you, and, and what my hopes of in sharing with you this intelligence um, and this information that comes from that came from Mornay and Phaseus, and the age, their perspective. Um, I, I want you to know that I don't know if it's intelligence is actually the right word, but I've heard the expression decision support. And, and that's really what I hope that this information does for you. It, it gives you decision support because in order to make a really valid decision, uh, regarding events and, and, and um, directions in your life, you need data. And if you have 17% data, your decision support is limited to that. And your odds of making the wrong mistake are very high. And we've all been there and, and we're still there. And, and we're, we're gonna talk about that here in a minute about some of the things that are out there, current stat. Um, but I want you to know that that's how I approach this and, and, and that's where I'm at when I share this with you is I'm taking it upon myself to give you decision support so that you have more of a perspective, um, more information, that you are able to see things in, in a different way and, and and of course, you know, you all have your own perspective, you know, based on your collection of information that's out there. And that's exactly what you're supposed to do. Um, and because that's exactly what I do as well. Now, having said that, there is a lot of chatter that the cabal is done, that the cabal is surrendering, and that they have surrendered. Ladies and gentlemen, that is bullshit. Okay, it, uh, there is no other way to sugarcoat this. It's bullshit. They haven't surrendered. They're not going to surrender. That is not who these beings are. Okay, they, the only way they're going to go out is the way Rockefeller went out, David Rockefeller. Unfortunately, because they are addicted to power and they do not know who they are unless they are controlling and manipulating humanity. This is just their mindset. So, and, and, and I know that there is a, a international speaker out of Japan who posts a really interesting newsletter who is saying that it's over, that it's done. And, and it's absolutely not true. If you're watching current events, does it look like it's all, like they're done? Do you see the New World Order surrendering? No, they're not. Not yet at all. They are certainly backing up. 
but you have to remember they have been in power these these families have been in power for a thousand or more years and behind them are the ETs these rogue regressive groups that are basically threatening them saying if you don't get this done you and your entire family your entire genetic line you're done you're gone so these sellouts these traitors of humanity will do anything okay they will do anything and that's what we're seeing we are seeing some very desperate moves and you need to be aware of that okay and and the reason for that is that we have to maintain our focus on what it is that we want on holding love um, and, and holding a positive space a vision of humanity and a direction for humanity and, and I realize that um, individually we're all individuals here but collectively the number is growing exponentially and that is a very 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 positive sign now we're getting a lot of help and to start off we're getting a lot of help from the earth from the earth herself and we've talked about this human residence here on on, on the past webinars we've talked about the human residence in past webinars and I think the last time we spoke I had said to you that I thought it was somewhere in the, in the low 30s um, I have got an update for you and the last measurement of the human residence was at 51 <laughs> 51 now ladies and gentlemen this is unprecedented and the Schumann residence is essentially the Earth's heartbeat. Now her heartbeat is getting faster. Her heartbeat is getting stronger. And this is a wave. This is a frequency is what she's generating. Now this frequency that she is generating, we are permeating through our body. It is coming into our cells and vibrating our cells and raising the vibration of our cells as well especially if you're aware of this and you can get quiet and feel nature and ground yourself to nature okay you're, you're able to find that real quiet space um, and calm down the internal chatter or the the panic from from life and bills and just fear the fear that everyday life generates and so many of us wondering if we're going to be able to meet our needs you know even just for a moment to just get into that place and, and quiet yourself that human resonance just fills all the cells of your body and it's nurturing okay this is a very very good thing but it's at 51 and I will continue to monitor it and I know that there are others who are doing that as well who are also sharing information with me um, there is a, a, a young man from Iraq who is now living in England and his first name is Ranu. He sent me a, a video, uh, I believe it's up on YouTube, regarding the magnetosphere of Earth. And ladies and gentlemen, there are some extraordinary things going on with the magnetosphere of Earth. And I simply at the moment do not know what it means. Um, and I'm looking into it I'm, I'm absolutely looking into it but it looks as if there's something um, affecting it pulling it away from the planet and I will have hopefully some definitive information on that the next time we meet okay now Before we get into the anomalies, the, 
the it is important to note, and I've I've mentioned this before. There is something much bigger playing itself out here on Earth, and it is third density and fourth density, and this is where it's taking place. And this is the whole devil, fallen angels, uh, ET, alien, um, uh, benevolent angels, uh, benevolent alien thing is is playing itself out in third and in fourth. Okay, that's predominantly the the, the playing field where a lot of this drama is playing it out, playing itself out. I want to remind you. that this is their shit okay this drama this long time drama that has been going on between these different tribes of dimensional beings has been going on for a very 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 long time and at some point, it will be moving off the Earth into space, into what we see as third, and then into what we see as fourth density. It will be moving. I want to remind you not to emotionally lock into this drama, because this drama has nothing to do with us in the long term. This drama would be playing itself out even if they weren't on Earth and they were at some other planet. It would be playing itself out. Because you have two very different belief systems and methods of, uh, methods of operation, of perspective that have never, that have, they've never merged and it doesn't appear that they're ever really going to merge the reason I, I i focus on this is because if angels appear in the sky if aliens appear in the sky or aliens appear physically to the world understand something they are not better than you. They are different from you. And they represent a different tribe, a different reality, a different perspective. The fact that they're here doesn't mean we need to worship, that we need to fall down, that we need to bow down, that we need to give them all of our focus and say, yes, you show us the way. And I'm telling you this, even if it were the benevolence, except the benevolence wouldn't ask for our power. Okay, the regressives will, because they feed off that stuff. That's their gig. The benevolence wouldn't ask for this. But nonetheless, in order to be a truly free race, tribe of human beings on Terra, we have to take responsibility for ourselves. It's good to get data. It's good to ask questions. It's good to um, ask for examples on how do we do this? How do we do that? How can we improve this? How can we improve that? And then we take in all this data and then we as a race, as a people, we talk about this and we figure out what makes sense for us to implement to do. We have to make this reality our own. It hasn't been. We have been so controlled and manipulated for so long. This has to be us. It has to represent us. It has to feel us. It has to be an expression of us. And in this process of creating our own reality, it is my sincere hope that we truly discover who we each are and who we are as a race and we drop all this divisional bullshit that we have been taught 
from governments, from races, from bias, prejudices, and religions. We drop all that crap because that's all it is. It's nothing but noise. It's nothing but a distraction. And it is nothing that, and, and it, it, all it does is divide us. Because things are happening very quickly. This is why I'm bringing this up today. Things are happening very quickly. And, you know, once they start popping the information about uh, Antarctica, I don't want us to lose focus of what's really important because they are going to control the conversation. They are going to use the media to draw our attention to the gods, the aliens, to this, the that, the reptilians, the fallen angels, yada, 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 yada. Ladies and gentlemen, this is still about us. This is still about us, humanity, okay? This is our home. We're the ones who have to own this. We're the ones who have to create it. We're the ones who have to mature and evolve and embrace our own power, personal power, and power as a race, okay? We can do this. We absolutely can do this. But we have to remember that the regressives are here because they want to control us. They want our power to create. The benevolents are here to help us because they realize that right now we're abusing our power to create because we're being manipulated. So the common denominator here is us. It's us creating our reality. But this needs to be what we want as a race, as a species, okay? Not when somebody else tells us. Not with the A's, not with the Pleiadians, not with the Arcturians, not with the Syrians, not with the Reptilians, the Orion group, none of it. If they want to give us positive input, and perspective, that's one thing. But we need to do this on our own. We need to create this our way. It needs to be us, okay? It would help to know the lessons of history so we don't make some of those absolutely catastrophic mistakes that the Andromedans had showed me uh, on, and during many contacts where they showed me the ruins on different planets of species that lost their original intent and they ceased it ceased ceased to exist we don't have to do that but it would be incredibly helpful to know what those mistakes were so we don't replicate those okay Have you, have you ever wondered, because I have ever since I was a kid, and I enjoyed this part of my conversations with Mornay and Phaseas, more so Mornay, um, because he was just, he was more open with a lot of information um, about current current time um you know Viseus <laughs> um Viseus was absolutely remarkable there is no other word for it but Viseus was Viseus <laughs> he was just he was Viseus you know and he was either on or he wasn't so I will leave it at that we'll, we'll talk about that again some more one day Um, regarding Nibiru, um, I hold my conviction that it is coming and that it is very, very close to us. I, I do. And I'm not going to waver in that in any way, shape, or form. So, 
I'm going to give you some current stat information. Okay, the Earth, the Earth's current tilt is 23 and a half degrees, and it is moving further south as we speak, which is why the weather is changing so dramatically. I want you to know that Mars's elliptical tilt is now at 25 degrees. You're not hearing this. Saturn's is at 30 degrees. Uranus is at 98 degree tilt. Okay? There is something underneath our solar system that is literally affecting the gravitational field and it is pulling the planets. Now, interestingly, the one that's the least affected by this is Jupiter, but even its tilt is at three degrees. And it's a monster. Jupiter is a monster. So, this cyclical event of the, of the passing of a star system through our solar system, or a solar system passing through our solar system, is cyclical. It's happened many, many times before. And in fact, ladies and gentlemen, this is how and where most of the moons that we have in our solar system got here. Not all of them, but many, many, many of them got here is that as Nibiru was wandering in, in its orbit, it's, it's passed through different parts of the galaxy. It has picked up strays, stray planets, stray moons. And it would take them and it would gather them and make sure that they would, and they would put them in their tail and they would drag them with them and put them somewhere so that they would not in any way, shape or form become an issue to its own orbit. Now you have to ask yourself, okay, well, let's take a look at Uranus. Uranus has 27 moons, okay? 18 of them have absolutely perfect orbits around the planet, which is unheard of, okay? Now, those moons, those 18 moons, are all artificial. Miranda. Miranda was brought here and is of originally of Orion origin. It came out of a star system or solar system in Orion. And how it became loose, I do not know. But it's of Orion origin and the biological and uh, chemical components of that planet will match those of stars in Betelgeuse, in the region of Betelgeuse. Okay, now what's interesting too, which of course NASA never says, uh, is that most of the moons completely differ from each other. So they do not have the same origin uh, or, or source. They come from different parts of our galaxy. Titania also comes from the red star Betelgeuse. Now these are all hollow, by the way, but they're artificial moons. Puck, Puck came out of Aldebaran. Okay, that's its origin was somewhere in the Aldebaran system. Pleiadian, Plejaran, whatever they call themselves. Okay, Perdita is, is another moon that's here from Lyra. Belinda is from Alpha Draconis. And I am told that Belinda is still active uh, on the interior. That this is uh, of Uranus. These are all hollow. And at one time, they all had the ability of internal propulsion. They could move on their own. But they were brought here and they have put been put around orbits in order to keep them out of the way. All right? Um, it's... I, I don't want to use the analogy that our solar system has become like a, a used car lot or a salvage yard, <laughs> but 
but in truth, that's, that's pretty much the analogy that is appropriate at this time. I, I'm sorry, I'm feeling some discomfort. But that really is the, the, um, the analogy that is absolutely appropriate. And I mean, it's, it's, just, it's absolutely remarkable. Now, what's fascinating, and this is why I chose Uranus first, is Uranus is mostly water. And it is virtually covered with ocean. There are several very, very large islands. You could almost call them continents. Uh, but they are, in fact, islands because they're completely surrounded by water. Several of the moons, Perdita of Lyran origin, uh, Puck of Aldebaran origin, and Belinda, they have on their, on these moons, inside these moons, they have or had biological laboratories. And what I mean by that is they carried or had with them or were used as uh, DNA altering laboratories. One of the great wealths of the universe is not gold, uh, it isn't silver, it isn't the Federal Reserve note, it's not the euro, you know, um, and it's not the British pound. What it is, is life forms. And what happens is, when a, a life form is discovered, generally what happens is, is that the discovering race will alter it in such a way that they will put their own DNA mark and or message into the DNA of this particular life form, basically declaring ownership. Now, does any of that sound familiar to you? Okay, because we've heard all that crap about our DNA. And this is what they do, and they alter it. Well, Earth, um, having our vast oceans, its greatest source of, of life is the insect world and the ocean. Uranus was used to develop and create biological ocean mammals and non-mammals. And there, was, there are some that are, there are many actually still there in the oceans of Uranus. And those that they could tweak were brought here and they were DNA, their DNA was adjusted so that they could adapt to an E environment, which is what Earth is. Earth is a very complex environmental system. It's not the norm, all right? Uh, but it's complex. But when DNA life forms can be adjusted, it, it gives this type of an environment um, the ability for great expansion um, because of the many different chemical gaseous components that make up the E environment, the Earth environment, okay? Uh, biological environment. And this is what's happened. And as they were doing this, as they were adjusting this, they would bring life forms here, and they would see if they would survive, and if they don't, they wouldn't. Um, which is why it's interesting that uh, paleontologists are finding uh, different types of dinosaurs, but just one of. And that's because they were here, the extraterrestrials were here testing different life forms that they had found in other parts of the galaxy and or in other galaxies. And they brought them here and they adjusted them and tested them to find out which environment they could survive in. Because the more life forms you have in a specific environment, 
the more rights and claims you have to declare that you can put your little flag here and say, okay, I have some ownership here because these are our life forms. These biological life forms have our stamp on them, okay, or their, their personal genetic tweaks. Uranus is absolutely fascinating because they have in the oceans there still prehistoric whales they have megalodons that exist there still to this day uh, many of the different life forms that they have that are flourishing there are those that we would find on our planet at the deepest levels of the ocean crustaceans jellyfish just some really really weird stuff that is what's flourishing in the oceans of Uranus and it is not frozen it is almost nothing what we've been told and I'm told that the uh, the specific moon Belinda is still very active in creating things and experimenting with them there uh, still on Uranus so <sighs> This is no different than what our scientists are trying to do now with transhumanism. Though I don't agree with it because I don't think we have a clue as to what we're really doing. Uh, and, you know, DNA altering, which I'm, I'm, I'm hearing is going to be a big business here in sometime in the next five to 10 years. Um, it's no different than what we're trying to do. It's just that these races have been doing it for thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, some races millions of years. Um, I share this with you because this is not miracle stuff, okay? That doesn't make these aliens gods. It just makes them smarter and having more knowledge and experience than we do. But I want to remind you, okay, for a, we are a very young planetary race that has been genetically altered, uh, shut down. We have been uh, bombarded by philosophical and religious programming that is absolutely not serving any of us because it disempowers us uh, in the sense of holding and creating our own personal power. We are at a place where now we are moving out of that, out of those control mechanisms. We have a space fleet, even though most people don't have a clue that it exists, that is already out there uh, in our galaxy. It has left our solar system and it's, it's in our galaxy. So on many levels for such a young race, in, in many respects, we're, we're, we're moving, we're, we're gaining some parity with all these other races. Because as they roll out, Antarctica, as they begin to roll out, very, very soft disclosure. You have to remember this. You are a soul with a body. Okay, you're not a body with a soul. You're a soul with a body. And you were not born and hatched on Earth. Most of us have come from a higher dimension. Six, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There may even be a twelve or two here. Do you understand? <laughs> they have done nothing compared to what we have been experiencing. 
moving through the dimensions, getting deeper and deeper into physicality. Worship the God within you. Because that you, that part of you, is what's connected to the source of all things. And the universe is trying to remind us of that, which is why I believe that the Schumann resonance is going so high. Now, this frequency is also happening on all the other planets in our solar system, by the way. Um, I, I just, I'm not calling it the Schumann residence because um, I don't know what the frequency is of all those other planets. But it isn't just happening to Earth, it's happening to our entire solar system. Okay. Schumann frequency, very important to our health. Okay, now. As our cells, because of the human frequency, continue to vibrate and increase in vibration, essentially, folks, what it's doing is it's tuning, retuning our DNA. Now, this affects every single cell in our bodies. And, you know, each of us has at least 75 trillion cells, okay, in our body. And they're all vibrating. And this vibration is a sound, it's a frequency. And because we're a holograph, there's also color. So it's sound, light, and color. And it's vibrating. You, you are, in fact, a piece of music. I'm a piece of music. JP, all of us, we are a piece of music that is vibrating. Okay? Every single cell in our bodies has at least one million neuropeptide receptors that surrounds each cell. Each one of these is also vibrating. Now I want you to know that the communication between cells, between DNA, all happens at the speed of light. And as the, the human frequency rises and continues to rise, that communication, folks, is getting faster. It's going to be faster and faster and it's going to be faster than what we now know as the speed of light. This is where our bodies become light. This is where the bodies begin to vibrate at such a frequency that we begin to see people move into fourth and then come back into third. Move back into fourth and then move back into third. This will begin with some of our young people who are here for this very specific purpose. Their purpose is to take in this vibration, move into fourth, and then come back and share what they know with their family, friends, loved ones, etc. So that as we continue to move forward, we don't move into a space of fear. What happens is we have some knowledge. We have an expectation of what to expect. And then as they go, some of us will be able to go with them. Now, I don't know the process of how long one stays before one comes back, but it's gradual until the point where at one point you will move into fourth and you will stay there. You will not have to come back into third density. Your vibration will be high enough that all of your cells vibrate at that frequency, which is fourth, and fourth has multiple levels. But you're there. You're no longer in third density. And then that will continue until we move into fifth. That's the process. I have heard this instantaneous thing. And, uh, I can not get, uh, how do I put this? Apparently, that's just not how it happens, okay? And if it does happen that way, it'll be a shock to everyone, apparently. Okay? No more, no less than us as well. Uh, but that's not exactly not how it goes. So, um, there are
the Cabal, the Deep State, the Orion Group, the Draconians, whatever you call them, okay, the dark side, whatever you call them. Uh, they're pulling out all the stops and they're going to do anything and everything they can to do what they can to lower our vibration. Um, and the biggest tool that they have is creating fear. I, I want to remind all of you to remain the observers. Realize that much of what you're seeing in the world is drama. Um, and I know that there's a lot of talk about nuclear war. Well, they want you to be fearful of that. Uh, they want you to be afraid of nuclear war. They want you to be afraid of war, period. They want you to be afraid of economic collapse. They want you to be afraid of uh, civil war in the United States, civil war in Europe. They want you to be afraid of refugees. Fear, 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 fear. Because fear will definitely lower your vibration. Okay? And, it's, and you need to understand that fear is a voluntary reaction. You voluntarily are moving into the space of fear because you don't have enough data or information or decision support to really know what's going on. Um, cell phones. Cell phones are not helpful for one's uh, vibration. Uh, having it on your body, uh, <laughs> it, uh, it, it's, it's not a positive thing, okay? But of course, we all have cell phones. Uh, don't be afraid to just put it down somewhere in your house and not carry it with you everywhere. Okay, you can always call someone back, but give your body a break from having it on you 24 seven. And by all means, never leave it on when you sleep. Okay, turn the damn thing off. There's an uh, old expression in the in the uh, in the boxing world that when you get into the later rounds, the tenth, twelfth, you know, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth round, that you're in the championship rounds. Okay, that you're you're now into that place where the fight will be decided. Well, ladies and gentlemen. I am here to officially inform you that you are now in the championship rounds. We all are. We are in the championship rounds and how we proceed, how we view ourselves, how we view the world, how we not emotionally buy into the fear and volunteer our energy to create more fear will make will make a great difference in how this goes. And I have said this throughout the whole program, uh, or ever since I started talking back in the 90s. We are going to get assistance. Uh, they're not going to sit back and just watch this happen and leave us hanging, you know, with our ass in the air on our own. That isn't going to happen. However, they can't necessarily rescue us. We have to participate in this process. Okay, we have to own what's going on here. We have to make a decision, not only for ourselves, our personal beings, but for humanity that this is not the direction we want to go. We don't want to be a slave race. We want to be free. We want to evolve. We want to ascend. We want to discover not only the physical universe, 
but the spiritual universe. We want to know it all, and we want to do it as ourselves, representing ourselves, being ourselves, not being something else someone chose for us. Okay? We're in those championship rounds. And, and it's going to seem like time has sped up. It's really more that the events have sped up because the dark side is losing ground. And uh, they're going batshit crazy. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. They are just going batshit crazy. Uh, so they're, they're, they're doing anything they can. They are throwing everything against the wall. They are speeding up programs. They are just, they're abandoning other programs to put something more dire uh, in its place because for these guys, for, for, for these, this rogue, dark group, there is no tomorrow for them, okay? They're done. This group has wreaked havoc through multiple galaxies. And we have, we have starships, we have star tribes from other galaxies wanting to get their hands on this group, okay? Uh, that's how loved they are. So, uh, again, just perspective, uh, decision support, remain the observer. I know we just bombed Syria. I know there's all this talk about North Korea. I understand all of that. I would like to remind you that nowhere on this planet has there not been a visitation by a UFO ship that hasn't turned off and melted circuit boards and every nuclear weapon on this planet? Okay, I want to remind you of that. Okay, anyone with nuclear weapons has had these visits and they've had these things turned off. So it's talk, it's drama. It's designed to draw you in and create fear. That's not the issue, okay? The issue is us freeing ourselves from this group and creating our own path for humanity to evolve uh, and be proud of who we are and our heritage and what we've accomplished in 10,000 years. It's amazing and we have every reason to be hopeful but we cannot voluntarily move into fear. JP, can we do some questions? Folks, I hope oh, you're yes, Captain. Oh, I, I are. <laughs> so, ah, do you want to uh, just take a, a second here? So, thank you very much. I, I would, you know, if, if we could hear the rest of everybody, I'm sure they're all clapping. Um, and uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of good vibes in the uh, in the in the chat here. You know, JP, so, politician. politician. Yeah. Have you ever thought about that running for office? Oh my God, no! Oh my God, no! <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm very impatient with people. So, <laughs> so uh, today's first question uh, is about today's uh, experience. Uh, Ingrid, in light of today's U.S. attack on Syria. Does Alex have a wish to give any comment as to what is really behind all the propaganda? Now, it's interesting. She's saying Enki equals Russia and Enlil U.S. Israel. Does, does is, is this all just smoke and mirrors or what's, what's going on? Or is this the, um, as you were saying, the, uh, the cabal pulling all the, all the stops out? Yeah, it's the cabal. It's the cabal. They're, they're pitting everybody against each other uh, because in the end, if, if no one can ever join together, they win because they're controlling both sides of the conversation. That's what it is. Um, and it, 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 as, as far as the NLL, um, NT label, stupid, stupider. That's, that's really the label that, that should be put on it, okay, in my opinion, or dumb and dumber. 
all right, because there's no winner if you go down this road. And instead of them realizing it and just saying, you know what, we're not playing this game and completely disempowering the dark side, they continue to play this game. And what's eventually going to happen here is that the governments, as we know them today, will completely destroy themselves and take themselves completely out of the game, leaving us people free. Uh, and, you know, the safest here in America, it's very common for an American to say, you know, when co Congress is on recess, that's when we're the most free and we're the safest is when Congress is on recess, which is, you know, something pretty tragic to say, but it, but it is true, unfortunately. And it's probably this can be said for the same in Europe when Parliament's on vacation, you know, that's when you guys are the most safe and the most free. So, um, again, it's drama, okay? They need to suck you in and, you know, think about it. it for Trump to do it at this particular time, he was sending a message to, to Putin because he's meeting him soon in a few weeks. He has the president of China sitting at his dinner table Okay, and China has talked a lot of smack here in the last couple of weeks about the South China Sea. And here's Trump, you know, eating his steak across from him, you know, blowing the crap out of a out of a military base in Syria. So, you know, there's subtle messages being delivered, and that's all that political layer of the bullshit. Okay. That's what it is. He was sending a message, I am not Obama. <laughs> That's what he was saying. Uh, you can take that for whatever it's worth. Fab. Uh, all right, now, uh, so first of all, as I said, um, uh, people, people are clapping. I mean, there, um, you know, there's, there's how many dozens? Everybody's yay, applause, standing with applause, cheering, clapping. Bless you. Today was excellent. We needed it again after a week of lies from the powers that be. Yeah, this is the kind of alkaline to the uh, to the powers that be's acid that is burning away our our soul and our our joy. So, uh, and one more from Elaine. Thank you, Alex, for your continued bravery to JP and James for gifting us and Alex with your technical abilities in order for the show to be possible. You are Earth's unsung heroes. Anyway, meanwhile, back at the questions from Lauren. Will David Rockefeller's soul be allowed to incarnate on Earth? <laughs> you know, I don't know what they do with the assholes. I, I really don't know. Um, don't they make a hamburger out of it? Uh, to be continued. I'll see if I can get some information on that. You know, uh, you know, I've I've heard the metaphysical thing that you know they come in to be assholes. And, and then when they leave that incarnation, you know, they're normal again. Um, I don't know that that's true, to be honest with you. Um, in fact, my, my personal intuition would tell me that it isn't true. Uh, so, because how is it that incarnation after incarnation after incarnation, the Orion group and the Draconians were such assholes? How is that? You know, you would think somewhere there would be a break from that. But there doesn't appear to be. So um, uh, I don't believe that that is true. So I don't know what they do with them. Uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe he's on. Maybe David Rockefeller is on board one of those starships from one of the other galaxies. And um, you know, I don't know. Good question, though. Food for thought. Is there's, there's some. I mean, there's there's a few of these, you know, powers that be kind of figures that are dying or you know disappearing and, and stuff like that. Uh, and my my theory is that you know all these background stories are, are taking taking effect, and they're saying you know that they're actually being taken out. Um, do you think that's that's true right now? Yeah, I think there's a degree of that absolutely happening. Uh huh. Okay. It's definitely it's time for them to go. It really is. It, it has right. run its course, and it has become uh, our, our survival as at risk if we let this group 
go any further with their bullshit. Good. So, from Fence Walker, um, and this is, is AI connected to the personality of Earth, or is the personality we feel actually a real being? This is when people connect to Gaia. Do they, they, are they actually connecting to a real thing, or is it an AI, uh, what's the word, hijacked interface? Sure, sure. You know, Fence Walker, that is a stunningly wonderful question. And the planets that harbor multiple life forms are in fact themselves soul. They cannot be strictly AI. Because where you have strictly AI, there is absolutely no compassion. And because there's no compassion, those life forces, those life forms perish. So where there's compassion, you have a genuine soul. The earth has a genuine soul which is why you have such extremes of emotions. We are not all this, all the time. That doesn't evolve, that doesn't go anywhere, okay? The extreme of emotions is a sign of compassion, of, of emotion, and that is soul. The earth has soul. Good question. That was a really good question. Well no, done. No. Well done. To the dark side. What are black-eyed children and shadow people? You know, I don't know. I, I haven't gotten to those questions yet. All right. Um, okay, I, yeah. You know, it could be that the black-eyed children aren't really children. It could be they're androids. Um, it could be they're androids. They're not, they look human, but they're not human at all. It could be robots. And it could very much be that that's what they are. Um, in fact, that's kind of what I'm leaning leaning towards. And the reason I say that is uh, only from a personal perspective of reading people who have met those type of beings, those children, uh, they all say exactly the same thing. There was zero warmth at all emanating from the children which means there's not a soul there. So that leads me to believe they're probably just androids. Um, could be AI androids. So that's what they're doing. That's, that's what I think it is. Um, that's on my list of questions for, for more in A, for M. Uh, it's a long list, but it's on there. <laughs> I bet it's a long list. So, excellent. Uh, so, so um, how this is from Ken. How are we to work with and maintain the third strand of DNA that Gaia is sending us the vibrational waves of? Thank you for all you do for humanity. You're welcome. You know what? I've asked for a manual. Uh, I've, I've asked for an ownership owner's manual on that third strand. I haven't gotten it yet. Uh, but when I do, we will certainly publish it. Uh, you know, what to do and how to do with your third strand of DNA. Uh, I don't know. And to be truthful, I don't know. I'm going through this, guys, just like you. Uh, but you know what I think? Uh, I think that we will remember. We are ageless. And I know for a fact that for many of us, this is not our first rodeo down here in third density. And I'm convinced that we will know exactly what to do. And it could be that when this strand is either regrown or, or re-triggered to vibrate, that it will empower us and we will remember what our life's purpose and path is. And then we will just begin to move forward in that direction because we will know exactly what to do because we prepped ourselves before we came in to this particular lifetime, what it is that we needed to do. So that's what I think. And, and if you remember before, both Morne and Viseas had said that many of us had come back in time to right a terrible wrong. So when I said this is not our first rodeo, that's what I was referring to. 
um, adjustments have been made to make sure that that Terrans us that we don't get bogged down and and fall into into the pit. Adjustments have been made to make sure that we move to a higher elevation, to a higher frequency. Um, and there will be a, a genuine fork in the road. And I truly believe that a majority of humanity will clearly recognize that fork in the road and will move and choose the light uh, as opposed to the same nonsense that we've all had to live with every single day of, of you know, strife and hardship and war and, and, and pain and control and manipulation. Who the hell wants to keep living like that? You know, so, and I believe the fork is coming. It's, it's, it, it, it's just ahead of us. Um, it's just ahead of us. Uh, it, it may be just a couple of years away, but it, it's there. It's definitely there. So, good question. Another good question. Jeff. We love Jeff's questions because uh, he's asking my, my favorite kind of questions, frequencies. Since five, fifth dimension is a range of frequency, can it be expressed in hertz for meditation or energetic, energetic resonance machines and things like that, consciously attuned to? So can we like find the vibration of it and then kind of tune up to that? It, can it be expressed as electromagnetic or scalar or what is it? Do you know? Or have you got any information on frequency? Here's what I would suggest as it pops in. <laughs> as it pops in. Here's what I would suggest. In your meditation, uh, Jeff, if you have a particular star system, that you resonate to and it doesn't matter what it is if you have a particular star system that you resonate to in your in a meditation envision yourself staring at a fifth density star okay now your soul knows what that looks like your higher self knows what that looks like Okay, because you pass them on the way down. It's still there, but you haven't asked the question. So imagine that you're staring at a fifth density star. And it would be different than the stars we have here in third density. Okay, it'll act differently, it'll react differently. It will be different colors. It'll have different strengths. And you will see a field around it unlike anything you've ever seen before. That's how you'll know. Those are your guide marks. I just, I just gave you those guide marks and laid them out for you. When you see those, then you will know that you're staring at something that is not third and not fourth density. Because fourth density stars are very similar to third. Fifth or not, Ho knew everything. Try doing that. And let us know how you progress and uh, if that works for you. And, and obviously, the rest of you, if that's what you choose to do. That's a wonderful question. God, guys, you guys are on the mark today. Well, we like done. frequencies. Uh, to actually, just as you, you were talking about it, I just went zip, 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 zip. And yeah, fifth, and, uh, it, there's something weird about it, and it, it uh, brings the tears to your eyes. The question from Lauren Do you think? that shyness is a symptom of fear, thus make it harder to evolve past the third dimension. So do we have to not be shy anymore in some way? Um, you know, this might surprise you, but I can be very shy. But I don't see it as fear. I just see it as a being vulnerable. But I don't move into fear um, 
when I'm I'm shy. I mean, if I if I'm in that space of being shy, I'm shy, and it doesn't matter. And it's only because I'm feeling vulnerable for whatever reason. But I don't see being vulnerable uh, as a weakness in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I just I see it as just being open. So that would be my response to you, Lauren. Um, it might, as far as it being a hindrance to evolving in or out of third density, if you think it's a hindrance, it'll be a hindrance. Because <laughs> where energy flows, you know, that's what you create. So if you think it's a hindrance, well, you'll be right. So maybe stop looking at it as a hindrance and just seeing it as, as yourself being so open that you're feeling vulnerable. And that vulnerability allows you to pick up other energies and other things that are going on in your space. And to me, that's a strength. And it should always be a strength. That's how I see that. So, picture it more as a sensitivity than shyness or fear. From Nancy, she says, sometime in August, the Agathans will be having a meeting with us humans. I don't know where that intel comes about. I wonder if, I wonder if this is what you are referring to. Any comments? Love you, she says. Uh, love you, too. Um, did you get a, a poster, an email from the Agarthians? <laughs> um, I, uh, and exactly who are the Agarthians? Are we talking about the inner earth people? Are these the same inner earth people that uh, Wilcock and, and, and uh, Goody are talking about? Or you see, I'm, I'm, you, you just throw out a label like that, the Agarthians. And, and I know about the legends of Agartha. Um, I honestly don't know how genuine those stories are. Um, there have been many inner earth civilizations that have left the planet. Um, so I, I, I simply don't know uh, who the Agarthians really are. Okay, so I apologize. I can't answer that question. Um, but, you know, I hear that stuff put out sometimes. You know, for, for example, the Ashtar Command. God, I am so sick of hearing about those guys. Okay, no one has done the research as to who they really are. And um, they are not Boy Scouts. They are not Boy Scouts. Don't even pretend that they're Boy Scouts because they're not, okay? Um, even though this whole thing is, is re evolving around us, this drama between the different star tribes, the dimensional shifting, even though all of this is happening and it's evolving around us, it's important that we stay focused on us, okay? On the tribe, our tribe, <laughs> healing our tribe. Stop the murdering of our tribe, the self-execution of our tribe. That's where we need to be focusing on. Not the Agarthians, not the Pleiadians, not anybody but us. We, we need to focus on us and we need to stand up for ourselves and we need to take a stand against all this tyranny and crap we just have to stop you know getting paddled behind the wagon we just got to stop it you know we're better than this and i know we're better than this i, I kind of went off on there but you know, no, it's good. It's good. Please, I mean, because these these are really important things, and people, it's 
it's important to to hold a focus because we're being so divided right now, aren't we? Oh, that, that's the game plan. That's exactly. the game plan. It's the plan that's been the plan all along. That's why we have so many religions. That's why we have so many governments. That's why we have so many languages. Okay? Because it works. It's worked for them all this time. It has. You know, it has. Uh, okay, another question. We like it when you get emotional, Alex. It's good. <laughs> now, uh, Mark is asking, was there a timeline that had a disaster in 2012? Yes, there was. But that timeline was altered by um, not only our consciousness, but by also by intervention. Uh, this is complicated, but you all know and you've all heard about parallel realities. And you and, and I have said this and I know that other speakers have talked about how parallel realities or, uh, or timelines have been merging into one. Okay, well, the forced merger of a particular timeline caused that disaster that was meant to occur in 2012 to move into a more positive timeline. And that's what happened. And there are still uh, uh, timelines merging. In fact, I think there's just one left, one timeline that's left to be merged. And I'm told that there is um, some merging. Uh, it's infrequent, but at times they do merge. And it's where um, people see modern cities in the sky. Um, those are cities, those are future cities of Earth where we are living in space, in the atmosphere, and it's like the Jetsons. We're, we're, we're cruising like the Jetsons. That's what it is. That's what's waiting for us. Um, but it, it, it moves in and then it moves out. It's, it's a fluctuation. But that's the last timeline. And, and that is a very, very, very positive timeline. That timeline represents us moving away from all this stuff that we don't want in our lives right now. So, but I couldn't give you a date when that's going to happen. I, I don't know. That will depend on humanity. You know, again, the focus. It, it all depends on the focus of humanity. How bad do you want it? Do you want it bad enough to create it? You know, and to own it. You know, to create the domain, create the domain of the knowledge and the knowing to create the reality you want, as opposed to letting someone else completely unseen to you, tell you who and what you are. That's what you got. That's what you got right now. So, and that's not working for, for most of us. You know, like 90% of us, it's actually not working. So. Actually, that's a fabulous idea. I always call it the, the organic timeline. The one that wasn't interfered with and like had all of Tesla technology and like today we would have those floating cities and and uh, and things on there. Anyway, um, Sonia, dear Sonia, are there any physical symptoms we may experience as we start to ascend? Um, I, I'm told there are. But I'm, I'm not I'm not up to date on what those are, Sonia. My own personal experience about moving into fifth was because I was wearing the belt. Okay, so um, it, I, I, it was cheating. I was cheating when I went on board and went into fifth with with Mornay Phaseus because they put the belt, which altered my the frequency of my physical body to vibrate at a frequency where I could move with them. So I, it was cheating. 
So I didn't have the symptoms other than Great Depression when I came back <laughs> because I didn't want to come back. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, isolation uh, from humanity because I was so open and so vulnerable after coming back. Um, but I'm not, I'm not up on it. Uh, I've, 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 some people have, have written to me and, and uh, they've described symptoms, nausea, headaches, uh, a lot of things like that. And, and it's very, very possible. Uh, you know, I will tell you this. Many of our physical bodies have a lot of toxins in them from the environment. When the body vibrates at a higher rate, the body naturally will begin to eliminate the toxins. That's enough to make anybody sick, especially if you're going, you're vibrating high and then you come back down, high and then you come back down. Uh, because it has to be gradual, it can't be just this, because you'll freak out, any of us would, okay? So it has to be a gradual thing. You know, you go up and then you come down, the body heals, and then it takes to the next level. But that whole process, you're releasing toxins from your body, um, all kinds of stuff. And I would think that that would be enough to make anybody sick. So, you know, especially when it's not voluntarily, you don't know that you're actually doing a cleanse, okay? So, I mean, if, if you know, you, you do a cleanse and you put yourself on a liver cleanse, uh, all those things, you know, you know what to expect because you're voluntarily doing it. It could be that the fluctuation of our frequency due to this human resonance and other factors, that it's not voluntary, so therefore we're not looking at it as a, as, as a, with the understanding that we are cleansing, that we are clearing our DNA of all this shit, you know, there you Absolutely, go. Alex. Absolutely, Alex. It's like the, the Earth is going through a healing crisis, and I'd say that anything that you're feeling is an ascension symptom, really. Okay, that works for me. You know, and so it's all good, even though, like, I mean, you yourself, in two, I think two two um, webinars ago, you said we're going to experience great catastrophes and then really nice stuff, and then. Yeah. The smaller catastrophes and really nice stuff. The way I see it, it's like a, uh, a lamination uh, machine where all these different sheets are going in to be fused and we're all going to come out of, uh, as one timeline. But So we have to be very flexible. Anyway, that's enough of my... Uh, well, that's, good. Well, that's good, JP. You know, you should do some radio. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, but I, I, haven't got, I haven't got the right. Um, I'll, no, I've got the right face for radio. Anyway, um, so listen, um, Uranus is so. No, <laughs> now here's a good question, and this is all about how real physics is about. Okay, so this is from Penny, and it's a really good question. Uranus <laughs> is so far from the sun. How can it not be frozen? Because Please educate us as to why the sun doesn't shine. Okay, that's a great question. It just isn't. So I'm going to come back at you, Penny, with a question. How is it that Saturn generates more power than it gets from the sun? Okay, quantum physics. We don't know shit. <laughs> okay, we just don't know anything. We are babes in the woods. And uh, the suns, the stars, okay, all the stars, they're electric. Okay, they are not, they are not nuclear fusion. The source of the energy that continues to light up our stars, to make our stars glow, comes from a higher dimension. This is quantum physics. And, you know, I, I, I'm going to add that to my list of questions um, to see if I can uh, get some real specific information on how is it that planets can generate more energy than they get from the star in their system, uh, which is that's clearly the case with Saturn. Um, 
And it, that's clearly the case with Uranus as well. So I will let you know, okay? Great question, Penny, thank you so much. Here's another one. How come if you go up in a mountain, it gets colder? How come if you go up in the air, it's really cold? How about if you go up in space, it's really, really cold? Just think about that a second. So here's a really good question again, and this is, this is uh, the heartwarming, heartwarming one. When will the space fleet return? How do we know when the, our secret space fleet will return and kind of do a flyover in our skies across the top of Washington and say, look, hey, guys, we've been here all along. When do you know? Will that happen? Is there a thing? OK. Uh, they're, they're around. They're, it's not really a question of where have they gone. They just haven't shown themselves. Uh, boy, how much trouble do I want to get into? Shall I just say invisible Nazi space fleet? Um, it's not all Nazi space fleet. It's not all Nazis. It's really not. Let me just put it to you this way. Now that they know what's really going on, the space fleet, and they realize they cannot break away from the planet, that, that they are still logistically totally dependent on Earth and its people, they are not going to tolerate the genocide of billions of people. So, don't be surprised. Uh, how do I, gosh, many of the ships that people are seeing now in the sky, many of them are of our own fleet. Okay. I would say at least 60 to 70% of the ships that we see in the sky today are of our own fleet. And those of you who have been fortunate enough and can afford to get infrared goggles or binoculars, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you'll see them in the sky almost every night, flying around in formation, etc. Those are our boys and girls up there, okay? They're around, we just can't see them because of chemtrails and, and, and you know, most people aren't even paying attention they're not even paying attention. They're watching TV. They're watching NCAA basketball. Uh, uh, you know, just the bombing of Syria. They're they're watching. Uh, you know, the insanity of Washington D.C. and it's they're not paying attention. So it's out of sight, out of mind. But they're here. Uh, you know, everything, I have to believe everything is in divine timing. I just have to believe that. Uh, and, and I'm good with that. I just, for me, I just have to keep reminding myself to stay focused on what it is that I want and not to give my emotional energy away to something that I know is bullshit, smoke and mirrors. And I, I, and I cannot allow myself to be drawn into that drama because it serves no purpose except to distract me from creating what I want, okay? So, guys, my time is up. That went quick. And, uh, one more, uh, I, or, I, or is it time to go? It's time to go, it's, it's Thank you. The, uh, final, the final moments. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, those of you that I mentioned earlier, I will be getting to you this week, either via email or a direct phone call. If I have your phone number, I may be emailing you, asking for your phone number so we can chat. Um, guys, I love you. Uh, I love you. I, I love us. And I only want the best for us. And I will continue to help you with decision support. Okay? And...
you know, thank you for, you know, giving me your time and your support in this little webinar, you know. Um, we don't reach a lot of people, but, um, you know, hopefully it's making a difference. Thank you for joining us on this extraordinary journey of self-discovery and cosmic enlightenment with Alex Collier. Your support means the world to us. If you found this video insightful, please show your appreciation by giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell icon to receive notifications for future uploads. By doing so, you stay connected with the latest cosmic revelations and help us spread Alex Collier's profound teachings to a broader audience. Remember, every like, subscription, and bell click can awaken more minds and ignite a collective shift in consciousness. We encourage you to share your thoughts, reflections, and questions in the comments below as your engagement fuels the expansion of knowledge and fosters a vibrant community of truth seekers. Together we can uncover the hidden truths of the universe and embark on a journey of cosmic transformation. Until we meet again, keep seeking, growing, and shining your light in the vast cosmic tapestry. If you would like to see Andromedan contact the Alex Collier live via video stream, we host an online seminar three times a month on a Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. For more information and dates of upcoming online seminars, please visit alexcollier.org. Please click on one of the above videos to seek more of Alex Collier's knowledge.